So now we switch gears and move on to three lectures on single gene disorders. So single gene disorders uh, display Mendelian inheritance patterns. And so there's a book that I recommend. Uh, it's actually a really great reference tool for when you're in practice. But uh, it's a classic that lists all the known single gene disorders. And it's called Mendelian Inheritance of Man by Victor McCusick. Uh, probably not something I said that you need for your exams, but you will like to see it in the future. So let's have a quick terminology recap before we get started on the details of single gene disorders. Probably these are terms that you are already familiar with, at least the majority of them. So first, let's uh, take a look at this one, uh, the locus one. You're familiar with locus is the place where a gene is on the gene, I mean on the chromosome. And at this locus, we have genotype uh, big A, little a, and that is heterozygous. This individual is heterozygous for genes at both loci. And so we have locus A, locus B, locus one, locus two, uh, and he's heterozygous. Uh, the haplotype is what is displayed on one chromosome, haplo meaning half, and you probably are familiar with that also. The one that may be new is the term compound heterozygote. And a compound heterozygote is an individual that appears to be homozygous, but the two mutant alleles come from a different background. So they're mutant in a slightly different way, but they come together to form a recessive. And in general, we'll find that recessive alleles are fairly uncommon. And so often uh, when a mutation has happened at a certain locus, it happens in multiple different places. You probably recall that from when we were looking at uh, HapMap in our uh, molecular genetics series. So compound heterozygote is probably the only really new term on this list for you. So two different mutations for the same thing, different origin. And the exception to this would be in uh, inbreeding or consanguinity where you have two individuals from the same family that have the same exact uh, mutation in the genes. So. Uh, another concept recap, pleiotropy, although we are dealing with single gene disorders that come on one gene, one gene we've already learned may have multiple effects. We've explored that in detail with uh, the sickle cell uh, beta globin gene uh, having effects in multiple places. Another couple of concepts to recap are penetrance versus expressivity. Now, these ones are particularly important because you are going to have a hard time, or we in general, have a hard time picking out environmental impacts and such from penetrance and expressivity because both affect the uh, ratio and degree of expression um, of these single gene types. So something that has variable penetrance means that even though all of these squares in this image have the genotype for the particular disorder, only some of them express it. And we express that as a percent. Something might have a well-known 90% penetrance. And you could probably find out that in McCusick's book. So variable expressivity then means that there is a varying degree of expressivity. It could be incomplete dominance, or it could be that the heterozygote uh, you know, one, one impacts, uh, has a greater impact on the expression um, versus the homozygous has uh, less impact on the expression or vice versa. So variable degrees of expression can be seen. And sometimes, of course, we see the variable degrees of expression as well as penetrance, right? So uh, things get even more complicated to pick out. A lot of the time in uh, genetic counseling, we're making pedigrees and trying to predict outcomes. Uh, because of penetrance and expressivity, you might not always be able to predict the outcome or characterize the disease that is in place in that family. So uh, these are two concepts to really keep in mind when considering uh, genetic counseling.